Hello everyone and welcome to the session in which we treat this modern convolutional neural network architecture known as the efficient nets. In this efficient net paper, the authors proposed a more controlled manner of designing convolutional neural networks such that it suits our demands in accuracy and speed. And as you can see in those plots, you see that we could choose suitable parameters such that we could modify or increase our accuracy while taking note of how this affects the speed. That said, in this section, we'll see how Ming Zingtang and Quark Le built the system for automatically scaling our convolutional neural networks much more efficiently don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification button so you never miss amazing content like this confnets are commonly developed at a fixed resource budget and then scaled up for better accuracy if more resources are available so with the case of the rest nets we had rest net 34 so your rest net 34 then after we had rest net 50 uh ref net uh, say 152 and depending on the kind of um, setting we are going to pick this uh, ResNet model which will permit us to run without any problems of latency while maintaining a reasonable accuracy so this means that if we are working in a high compute environment then we could afford to work with this Whereas if you are working in a low compute environment, then we would have to work with this uh, model with fewer conf layers. Now that said, in this paper, the authors propose a more systematic study of how this model scaling can be done. And unlike other methods where we just scale by increasing the depth, here the proposal scaling by increasing the depth increasing the width that is number of channels and the resolution that is the size of the input image and so here the proposal new scaling method that uniformly scales all dimensions of that's depth width resolution using a simple yet highly effective compound coefficient you could see the results right here you see for example the rest net 50 uh, let's extrapolate let's 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 pick this here although this has more parameters on the rest net 50 or oh, let, let, let's take instead the b4 because it has less parameters so you see it has fewer parameters than the rest net 50 Beth is uh accuracy that's stop one accuracy on the image net is much greater than that of this rest net 50 here so we have the efficient net b4 version which is about 83 percent uh, top one percent accuracy while this is only at about 76 percent of one accuracy now in this figure we see how we have this baseline some sort of baseline like in the case of the rest net we could say this is rest net 18 and then we have uh, this deeper model depth scaling this could be rest net say 50 now uh, in this case they have this baseline first of all this baseline is gotten by carrying out an automatic network architecture search so we we get this baseline and the different uh, layers we have for this baseline and then note that this baseline has a, a, a depth as you could see we has a, it has a depth and when we scale deeper when we, we do we carry out depth scaling you see we have much more layers added to this one and then when we do with scaling we increase the number of channels so you see we have this smaller channels for the baseline and then the width scaling permits us to increase this number of channels then also we have the resolution scaling which has to do with the inputs so here we have this input height times width and now after carrying out the resolution scaling we see we increase this uh, resolution this means that we may work with a base of 224 by 224 and then after scaling we may get to say uh, 640 by 640 then from here we also have the compound scaling which is uh, what is used in this paper 
where we don't only focus on the width or the depth or the resolution, but we scale all this systematically to achieve the best possible results while maintaining reasonable speeds. That said, we could see from these different plots that when you increase, like here we have uh, the width, that is the number of channels which is increased. You notice that as we increase this number of channels, at some point it starts to plateau. And then when we increase the, the depth at some point too, it starts to plateau. Then when we also increase this input size, that's a resolution, at some point it starts to plateau. And so this is why the authors propose a technique where we could combine all this such that we get even better results. And there we go. We see the effect of uh, compound scaling. You see that we have this D depth and then our resolution. You see when the depth is one and resolution is one, we uh, at this blue year, you see we have the worst results here. Whereas when we double this depth and then uh, increase resolution by 1.3, you see we have this best results right here. That said, we'll now dive a bit more deeper and look at this compound coefficient which they spoke of at the very beginning. So we go down here and we have this formula right here. See this formula right here. Or rather this equation, which is equation three, where we have this depth. We have this different formulas, these three formulas. The depth equal alpha uh, times phi. And now these fees are user-specified coefficient that controls how many more resources are available for model scaling. So this is some sort of scaling coefficient right here. So it's phi, phi, phi. And then here we have alpha, beta, and gamma. Now th this is designed such that alpha, beta squared, gamma squared is approximately equal to and alpha is greater than or equal to 1, beta is always greater than or equal to 1, and gamma always greater than or equal to 1. So now we are going to carry out a grid search. So we are going to search for the best uh, values for this alpha, beta, and gamma, and then fix them. Obviously, here they are constant, so we're going to fix this, and then now start varying phi such that we carry out the scaling in a more systematic manner. And there we go to carry out to or to find the the values for alpha, beta, and gamma. The fixed phi to be equal one, and then they obtain alpha 1.2, beta 1.1, and gamma 1.15. All of this such that we have this constraint. Now, oh, uh, they then fix alpha, beta, and gamma as constants and scale up the baseline network with the different phi's as we already explained. And it's based on these different values of phi that we obtain the different versions of the efficient net going from B1 to B7. Now, before moving on, it's important to take note of this efficient net B0, which is our baseline network. Remember, we have some baseline network, which we had seen here. Let's go this way. We have this baseline network right here, this one, this baseline network, which we're going to scale um, such that we have better results while working with compute constraints. Now that said, let's scroll, let's take this off and then scroll down back to this our uh, baseline model, which is given just here in this table. You see we have this baseline model, efficient net B0. And then you will notice first that the resolution is 224 by 224, meaning that we're going to start with image sizes of 224 by 224. But note that uh, different image sizes could be used for the different uh, models, although the best or the most adapted resolution for each model should be preferably used. Now that said, here you see we have a usual conf layer, and then we have this mbconf right here. Now, before getting to the mbconf, also note that after carrying out the neural architecture search, uh, the authors notice that we could also make use of this 5x5 five five kernel uh, or 5x5 five five kernel size filters. So unlike what we had discussed in previous sessions, this 5x5 five five kernel size filters are still very useful. Then getting to the mbconf we find here, here they say its main building block, it's 
is this mobile inverted bottleneck so we call the mobile inverted bottleneck which we found in sunlight all sunlight all is the mobile net version 2 paper we had seen already to which they also add the squeeze and excitation optimization now in the mobile net version 3 the squeeze and excitation optimization was added so here we have basically uh, the mobile net uh, inverted residual block which we have seen already and then if we check out this mobile net v3 paper which you can feel free to look at you would have this squeeze and excitation right here let's zoom into this you see here we have the mobile net version 2 with bottleneck with residual uh this residual then our bottleneck as usual here we have this low dimension input getting in and then it gets expanded and then we have this uh, low dimension output which is produced in this final layer right here now with this um, squeeze and excitation to better understand this squeeze and excitation uh, layer we should or uh, we could get back to how the conf layers actually work you see that to get this output let's take this off to get this output, for example, we carry out multiplications and additions for each and every channel here. That's for each and every channel in the input and those filters which correspond to this channel. And then to produce this negative one right here, all this are added up with equal weights. So the output from this computation, let's call it alpha, will be put here. Plus the output from this computation, let's call it beta, we will put here plus the output from this computation let's call it gamma will be put here and we would get this value or this output of negative one at this position now what the squeeze and excitation layer brings in is some weights on this um, addition operation right here so instead of just having a weight of one year one and year one we're gonna have some modified parameter or some parameters added here such that certain channels influence the outputs more than some others and so here we could have instead of uh, one we can have a weight a you have a weight b and here a weight c getting back to this paper the way this is done is uh, as such we start by carrying out some pulling and the result of this pulling will be one by one by c output now c is the number of channels so if here we have c channels here we'll have this output here c so this output here will be one by one by c this, you notice how this is small and then we have c the size the size c is exactly the same size right here so we have exactly this size is the same as this and then for the height and width is one by one now once we get this we pass this through two fully connected layers you see with this relu activation and then here we have this hard sigmoid activation after this fully connected layer and then here we get this output of this same uh, number of channels c which will match with this one but now what we get here will be multiplied by uh, each and every channel here so this now will serve as the weights it will serve as because remember we, we we designed this as a a uh, alpha plus beta plus gamma and then we had a b and then c so this a b and c is actually this uh output right here we're supposing that see the that, that the channel size equal three so we have this three here and there's these are the values which we get after going through this fully connected layer and then we take this now and multiply by each and every channel so if we break this up into three parts let's let's remove this uh let's erase this and we could cut this let's cut this into three parts so we have one two three so we suppose that it's one by one by three so if we have this this first part we'll multiply this chunk so we'll multiply this chunk and then this other part will multiply this next chunk 
and then this other part here will multiply this other chunk and so now we have this um, channels whose contribution to this output is now weighted that said we also have the expansion factor here is six then getting back to the results we see how the efficient nets uh, perform better than the corresponding uh, other conf nets with similar number of parameters or even more number of parameters like here we see how the efficient net b0 uh, outperforms the rest net 50 though you see this great difference in number of parameters as the efficient net is more efficient as or uh, has fewer parameters as compared to the rest net 50 we see rest net uh, efficient at b1 compared to rest net 152 you see 60 million here 7.8 but this one is more accurate than the rest net 152 um, you could check out from this right up to efficient net b7 you see we have this g pipe uh, they are 97 97 but this one has 557 million parameters while this is only at 66 million parameters and we could also look at the floating point operations you see here uh, we have fewer floating point operations for the efficient net b0 while still having higher accuracy we also see that if we scale the mobile nets and the rest nets will still they, they wouldn't still get better results compared to the efficient net and this shows the power of the network architecture search which was used in getting our baseline now we'll go down and check out this year we have um this results right here you see the the class activation map which is a visualization technique which permits um, practitioners understand how the model or rather what portions of the inputs helped in producing the outputs shows clearly here that when we use compound scaling we have the map which is more focused on relevant regions as you could see right here as compared to the baseline model and this other uh, models with the deeper with depth scaling with scaling and uh, resolution scaling